We're going to tie a uh, copper and orange Pro tube here. I'm going to take my Pro tube, slide it on the Pro tube needle, secure it on there so it doesn't spin. Get my thread started. First, we're going to tie in a little black dubbing made from uh, ice wing. I just take it and cut it up a little bit so I can dub it on easily. It has a nice sheen to it. And you're tying that in right at the junction on this tube in terms of the where you would stick the hook in the back or the junction tube and the skinny part. You always pretty much tie on the skinny part, right? Yes, tie on the skinny part, start right at the junction, butt it right up against there. Uh, tail is some fluorescent red shimmer. And really push your thread right up against that butt because that makes that tail stand up. And then next we'll do the rear half of the body with some copper flat braid or round braid whatever you got as long as it's a copper braid. Tie that in. Now next, I'm going to palmer some angel hair through this body. So I'm going to make a loop. Leave that loop. So I've got the loop made. And it's hanging out the back here. I'm just going to lay it off to the side. Okay? And I'm going to dub the body the front half. And this is some uh, angel hair that I've cut up to make dubbing out of it. Okay. So next, this is... Uh, let me get my dubbing loop spinner here. Lay that on the thread, get my wax, and a wax this thread just a little bit. I like a sticky wax for spinning this angel hair so it grabs it. I'm going to lay this, it's all pre cut, I've got it ready to go. I've got a clump here, I'm just going to spread it out. Get it as thin as possible, and you want to get it right up against the body because this is going to be your hackle that you palmer through. Keeping these fibers perpendicular to your thread. Let's use a hackle plier to grab the thread there. So now I'm going to start twisting this through. Spread it out evenly. Now that's got some serious flash to it and that is going to pulsate so beautifully in the water. Yeah, it seems stiff, like stiffer than it the hackle, is. and so it's going to really stay its, it's form. It's going to stay out. It'll lay down in the water, but it's going to do this maneuver, yeah. which is just sassy. Okay, so now I'm going to put an orange hackle in here. Tie these in backwards, tip first, curve down, so I can get that hackle to lay back in collar style. This also will help prop that wing up. First wing. Make sure to keep your wings pretty sparse because you're going to stack a couple of them in here. You should get it to length snip off this end here. The nice thing about that fox is it just compresses right down. Oh, I mean, it does. It's, it's pretty nice to work with, unlike deer and bucktail and yeah, wants to flare on you. Works really well. I'm going to use a razor blade here just to trim this up a little bit, keep it thin. So I've got my first wing in. I'm going to lay a little bit of copper flash in here, copper crystal flash, a couple fibers in there. 
from that to length. Next I'm going to put another orange hackle in. Again this helps keep that wing kind of stay up where it needs to be. So far this tube has no weight, Tony. I mean you're... It doesn't. Um, what we'll add is a cone in the front which will add weight. Now I would probably prefer to put an 8 millimeter cone on this and that's just the diameter of the cone. But I'm using a 10 millimeter on it because I'm going to fish this fly in the winter time and I want to add the weight to get it down. Okay. Last wing. This should be longer than the first. It should come clear back. Gives the fly a nice taper to it. Okay. I'm going to lay a little orange crystal flash over the top of this. I mean, this isn't your super low and clear water fly here. No, no it's not. The copper is the most visible shade in dirty water. So if you've got dirty or green water you could even fish, you know, it might be a little intrusive, but you could fish this in um, in clearer water. I probably wouldn't. I'd probably go to my pinks and stuff. Okay, so I've got that done. I'm going to whip finish this off. Okay, get my Zappa Gap. Get a fair amount just on the threads. Take my cone, slide it over into position. I usually wait just a minute so that'll dry a little bit. In the interest of time, we're just going to finish this out. So I slide that off of my needle. I'm going to cut this leaving just a little nubbin sticking out. And that's just enough to melt using the blue part of the flame. Just melt that down right against the metal. Do not leave any gap. You want this to help secure that in place. Okay? Now why doesn't that just close that tube up and make it impossible to thread your leader through it? I have no it? idea, but it <laughs> tends to roll out okay, good, and good. it hits that cool metal and just kind of flanges there. So I've got that on there. Now I'm just going to cut my junction tube to length, which I usually leave these a little long. I can always trim them on the river because I'm still working out my hook selection on these, which we'll do a section on that as well. But there is your copper and orange Scandinavian style protein.